I call this meeting of Township High School District 211 Board of Education to order. May I have a roll call, please? Mr. Bradley? Here. Ms. Cavill? Here. Mr. Kramer? Here. Mr. Dombrowski? Here. Mr. McGowan? Here. Mr. Rosenblum? Here. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Here. Would everyone please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. The next item is an action item to enter into closed session. The recommended action is that the board enter closed session to discuss minutes of meetings lawfully closed under the Open Meeting Act, security procedures, school building safety, and security, and the use of personnel and equipment to respond to an actual, a threatened, or a reasonably potential danger to the safety of employees, students, staff, the public, or public property. Appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees. Matter pertaining to an individual student and collective negotiating matters between the public body and its employees or their representatives. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mr. Kramer? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Mr. McGowan? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. Good evening. The recommended action is that the Board of Education return to open session. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mr. Kramer? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Mr. McGowan? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. Okay, would everyone please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Okay, thank you and good evening to everyone. Um, before we begin our uh, public comments and uh, move forward in our meeting, I'd like to share our mission statement because I think it's really important that we remind everyone of why we're here and what the focus is. Our mission statement that was newly revised through our strategic plan is as follows. Township High School District 211 serves the needs of our diverse community by providing relevant and rigorous learning experiences, opportunities for involvement, and strong support systems that empower all students to reach their full potential. So thank you. Um, the first item is, we do not have any recognitions this evening, so our first item is public comments. <clears throat> And the board welcomes you and is pleased to listen to your comments this evening. It's important that you know this is a public board meeting and not a dialogue. So the board members will not be responding to your comments or answering questions at this time. As a reminder, this board meeting is being taped and live streamed. We ask that you value the procedures and decorum of our meeting and be respectful of those at the podium so they may be heard. When I call your name, please come forward to the podium and state your name for the record. Though not required, you may state if you are a resident of the district. Please limit your comments to three minutes. You will receive a notification when you have one minute remaining. Any individual's unused time or place in order may not be deferred to another individual. If you wish a response from the superintendent, please leave your name and phone number with Mr. Tenniper at the end of the uh, board here. All right, there will be three minutes allotted for public comments this evening. Um, the first person is Jack Zumwatt, followed by Wick Vicki Wilson. Mr. Zumwatt? Hello, board. Uh, my name is Jack Zumwalt. I'm a pastor with New Hope Community Church in Palatine. I don't want to take up all your time. I first want to recognize that, that you all have a, a weighty uh, chair that you sit in. A lot of decisions come before you. 
uh, and things pull at your hearts and minds all the time, and it's not lost on lots of us. Uh, the country is obviously uh, dividing on many, many issues, and one of the issues that it's dividing on is I want to speak to tonight briefly, that, that sexual standards in school and the curriculum that's coming down potentially to this district and all districts in Illinois. Um, my concern is not that they're teaching about biology. Uh, my concern is not that they're teaching about um, uh, the things having to do with sex that, that are pertaining to a, a proper K through 12 education that are appropriate for age levels or grade levels. Uh, my concern, especially as a pastor, is that what is being taught is sexual ethics. And the question comes, from where do these ethics come from? And this is my concern. When I read some of the things that are being proposed to be adopted, to be taught, K through 12, and where they go, I am concerned because they violate sexual ethics. There is a right and there is a wrong. This has been revealed to us in God's word. He has created all men and all women. He said, let us make man in our own image. And he made them male and female. And then he blessed them. And he said, be fruitful and multiply. Just from these two verses in Genesis, we get a sexual standard from the creator himself. Male and female, monogamous marriage between a man and his wife in a safe and secure environment to multiply and reproduce little children and growing children. When this is violated, when this is gone contrary to, especially when it's taught to a young, impressionable minds, what we end up with was we have one minute remaining an over-sexualized culture where the person's first identity is not things that are rooted in uh, what makes a healthy person, but in a sexual preference. And that's not healthy for anybody. And so I, I know it's a weighty chair you sit in and you have lots of decisions to make, but this is one of the most weighty ones because every decision you make as leaders and decision makers, before God, you give an account. And if you make decisions or if you bypass decisions to uphold his word, how he has revealed it, and how we are to operate our lives is something that you have to give account for. So I encourage you to not adopt and to stand opposed to things that are contrary to sexual ethics and sexual morality that is actually sexual immorality. It's a hard decision you all make. I don't envy you, but I do urge you to stand by your creator on this. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Vicki Wilson followed by Becca Mar Martange. Vicki Wilson. I'm here tonight as a member of New Hope Community Church resident and former D211 parent. Regarding the new sex ed standards, um, some of the standards call for teaching minors who are years away from the age of consent about anal and oral sex and about the use of sex toys. Yes, sex toys and much more. Why has District 211 refused to say one way or another about opting out? It's been over a year since the governor signed this into law. You have also refused to say what you are currently teaching or to post the current curriculum and that is outrageous. It's no surprise Illinois was the first to adopt this since we have a, go we have a governor and other leaders who think if there's a disconnect between someone's brain and their body that the answer is to mutilate and sterilize children. Double mastectomies for minors are readily available without a therapist's note, minors being chemically castrated, people whose brains are far from fully developed. There are so many devastating stories about people who are now detransitioning from their nightmare. Here's just a sample. I would give up so much to be able to go back and have somebody actually pause things and help me explore my feelings at that age rather than pushing it further. I've suffered over a decade of depression and suicide attempts as a result of my feelings being encouraged and labeled as not treatable without transition. It's not okay to let a child go down this path. I can't imagine pushing or even allowing child to go down the same road. Chloe Cole has gone public. She's from California. She was 13 when she was put on puberty blockers and later testosterone. Only 15 years old, she underwent a double mastectomy, a decision she deeply regrets that left her with deep pain that she was prescribed an opioid-based medication for. She says, they effectively guilted my parents into allowing them to do this. They gave them the whole either you'll have a dead daughter or a live son thing. 
Chloe said she's received death threats from activists since announcing her detransition at 17. We know gender dysphoria you have one minute remaining. Abigail Schreier is the author of Irreversible Damage that everybody should read, The Transgender Craze Seducing Our Daughters. It's an investigation of a medical mystery called Rapid Onset Gender Dysphoria. A pediatrician later reached out to her to say she also thought it was insane that minors were self-prescribing testosterone, and she agreed that her profession was negligent in unquestionably affirming the sudden trans-identification of teenagers. If there are any parents watching the live stream, whether the district opts in or out, you can opt your child out. Other parents are already doing it. Join them. I urge this board to do your job and protect the children of 211. It's way past time to put a stop to dangerous gender ideology and the sexualization of minors in the classroom. Thank you. Becca Martange and followed by Joyce Slavic. Hello, my name is Becca McAtenay. I'm here today as a lifelong community member. I grew up in Palatine and graduated from Palatine High School. I chose to move to Palatine as an adult to work and raise my children in what I think is a very supportive and safe environment. I come to you today to speak as a volunteer within the group Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America, a national grassroots movement of Americans fighting for public safety measures that can protect people from gun violence. I have seen the many security and safety changes that the district has made to their facilities in the wake of the many mass shootings. In addition to those measures, I'm asking that the district approve a proclamation to send safe gun storage information to District 211 parents and guardians. I joined Moms Demand Action in June after the shooting in Uvalde. Since that day, guns have become the leading cause of death among American children and teens. One out of 10 gun deaths are age 19 or younger. According to the New England Journal, an estimated 4.6 Ameri million American children live in a home where at least one gun is kept loaded and unlocked. These improperly stored weapons have contributed to school shootings, suicides, and the deaths of family members, including infants and toddlers. As parents, community members, and educators, we have deeply felt the connectedness of school shootings across the nation, like Columbine, Parkland, Sandy Hook, Virginia Tech, and many more. Moms Demand Action has created a, non or a bipartisan educational program to emphasize to adults that it is our responsibility to keep kids from accessing guns and that every adult can play a role in keeping kids and communities safe. Be Smart focuses on securing all guns in homes and vehicles, model responsible behavior by ensuring kids don't have the opportunity to access guns, ask about unsecured guns in others' homes, and recognize the role of guns in suicide. School districts across the country have adopted this safe storage, me safe storage message like and District 214. Remaining. This is a, not, or a bipartisan action. I urge you to take action today to share this Be Smart information to keep our District 211 community safe and prevent gun violence in our schools, homes, and towns. Thank you for your consideration. I additionally have materials that I would like to share if I can. If you can please give them to Mr. Tenefer, okay. then he'll pass them out. Okay. We'll get those. Thank you very much. You. Joyce Slavic, followed by uh, Tom Wilhelm. My name is Joyce Slavic. I'm a parent in the district, and I could not agree more with what the previous speaker just said. Please, let's provide safe storage information to our community. Uh, this week is Banned Books Week. It's pretty horrific that we had this as a thing. According to a recent report by PEN America, a writer's organization dedicated to free speech, there's a recent rise in book bans across the country. Of the 1,145 books challenged in the last year, 467, 41%, included main characters who were people of color. 247, 22%, directly addressed issues of race and racism. And 379, or 33%, addressed LGBTQ themes or have characters who are LGBTQ+. Ironically, banning books makes them more popular. Bookstores get to market these banned books, and their sales skyrocket. Uh, Americans overwhelmingly do not support book bans. In a CBS poll from February, over 80% of those polled do not support any book bans related to ideas, criti ideas critical of U.S. history or discussions of race, which was the topic of their poll. So where are these bans coming from in the last couple of years? Organized hate groups that go from one issue to another, hoping to find any ways to keep a group of people angry enough during election cycles. You see the same hateful rhetoric from district to district and state to state. It's organized and well-funded. 
The talking points are the same. Disparage gender identity terms. Disrespect chosen pronouns. Talk about bathrooms as if any kid can go in any bathroom they want. Talk about needing Christianity in schools and parental rights. So read aloud uh, out of context passages from books they don't want any kids to have access to. This hateful minority should not have the right to decide for everyone what they can read and, and um, learn. It's not usually the kids with the issue, it's the adults. Kids can choose not to read these books. Um, author uh, Carmen Maria Machado, whose book In the Dream House has been a subject of these bans. For, and she says, preventing children from reading my book or any book won't protect them. On the contrary, it may rob them of ways to understand the world they'll encounter or even the lives they're already living. You can't recognize what you've never been taught. You have to one say. minute remaining. You can't put language to something for which you've been given no language. Why do we not see these acts of censorship for what they are? Short-sighted, violent, and unforgivable. Uh, learners of all ages benefit tremendously from having uh, access to diverse stories and histories and literature, which allows them to see themselves represented in the material they read and gain understanding of and empathy for those who may be different from them. So here's the bottom line. Why do adults think it's okay to go viciously after kids that are known to be at risk? Why attack LGBTQ students in particular right now? Ma masking is an, enough of an issue to keep their base, ang their base angry anymore, so they found something else. It's not that they're done with attacking honest history about race or equity programs. They think they have a plan for winning elections. In the end, the goal is to take down public education so we can't have honest, accurate history and race taught or discussions on gender or sexual identity. We can't let hate win. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Tom, Tom Wilhelm and followed by Terry Paulson. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Tom Wilhelm, a, a resident of Palatine. Let me start you out with one title uh, or one idea. We all have heard of the hurricane that's happening along the east coast of the United States. To put it in the terms of the Midwesterners that have now become, tornado. And when I say tornado, what I'm referring to is the potential tornado of book banning. Let me give you one example. A new report that was indicated by PEN America indicated that there was 2,500 book bans across 32 states during the 21-22 season, plus there were tip sheets being offered up to librarians on how to prevent their own harassment and security for them when they were in their own business or location as a librarian. PEN America, by the way, I mentioned earlier, is an organization made up of over 7,500 authors, publicists, running the range from Robert Foss, Arthur Miller, Edward Albee, Norman Mailer, Tony Morrison, Philip Roth, Salman Rushdie, Sam Shepard, John Steinbeck, and there's far, far many more in this whole story. What I'm suggesting here is very much that while the state of Illinois, some can say will be a blue state, we know that there are other states out there that are red states and purple states, and they're making changes to the world of book and book banning. And all I'm saying is be prepared like I did in scouting. Be prepared. Please have a plan B when it finally hits the shores of District 211, District 46, and every other district in the state of Illinois, as well as in every state in our country. So just take this into consideration because I think the rhetoric will become even more intense as we move forward. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next is Terry Paulson, followed by Stacy Gale. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Terry Paulson, and I'm a member of New Hope Community Church and a resident of District 211. Tonight, I'm here to talk to you about experts. We seem to have become a country where people can no longer think for themselves. The last two and a half years have demonstrated that there is no level of foolishness people are not willing to embrace as long as it's packaged as science and promoted by experts. I'm here to challenge your reliance on experts over your own common sense and decency. According to an August article by Christopher Rufo titled Unholy Alliance, Lurie Children's Hospital is creating partnerships with local school districts to educate teachers and staff about gender and gender affirmation. This is relevant because six years ago, District 211 brought in a couple of experts from Lurie's to help educate us parents and community members about gender identity. They told us that there are over 900 genders. In at least two, I'm gonna read from the article now. In at least two districts, and it's talking about Lurie's going around to local school districts. 
The activist at Lurie's Children's Hospital also recommended that teachers offer a series of sexually ex explicit resources to children as young as 11. At the end of the Beyond Binary presentation circulated to teachers in District 75 and 120, the hospital recommended a binder exchange program to assist teenage girls in binding their breasts. There's also a, quote, kid-friendly website for gender-affirming gear. Now, this is at the resources at the end of this presentation that Lurie's giving to, to local school districts, which sells items such as artificial penis packers and an LGBT-friendly sex shop for teens that sells a range of, I won't even say the word, vibrators, harnesses, anal toys, trans-friendly toys, and kink and BDSM You equipment. have one minute remaining. As graphic as, as all that is, when we simply talk about these things in the abstract, I think we always miss their essence. William Wilberforce took his fellow MPs down to the docks where the slave ships were being unloaded in order to help them understand the real nature of the slave trade. I'm bringing the docks to you. These are packers. For those of you who can't see, a packer is a life-size replica of male genitalia made of medical grade silicone for girls to strap on in order to feel more like boys. There are even models to help them go to the bathroom standing up. What teacher, what's a teacher supposed to do with this? Help a student pick a color? This isn't science, this isn't medicine, this is evil. And it's evil directed at kids. With experts like these, who needs pedophiles? German-American political philosopher Her Hannah Arendt once made the observation that most people never Your make speaking up their time minds has ended. to be good or evil. I am challenging you to be good and courageous and stand against this. Thank you. Stacy Gale. Stacy Gale, followed by Jessica Hinkle. Hello, my name is Stacy Gale. I'm a resident of District 211. I would appreciate a written response to my public statement from both the administration and the school board. Does the board expect the administration to follow the laws in the state of Illinois? I realize the role of the board is not to manage the operations of the district, but I do believe the board's oversight at a minimum should ensure the administration is adhering to state laws. I recently emailed the superintendent and board about the district's failure to meet the legal requirements mandated by Senate Bill 100. State law mandates the following. Establish and maintain a parent-teacher advisory committee to develop, with the school board, policy guidelines on pupil discipline, including school searches, etc. It also requires school boards, along with the parent-teacher advisory committee, must annually review their pupil discipline policies, the implementation of those policies, and any other factors related to the safety of their schools, pupil, and staff. I know the administration is familiar with Senate Bill 100 because of a slide provided as part of a FOIA response where the administration references Senate Bill 100 during a staff meeting at Fremd. As a parent and taxpayer, it is my expectation that at a minimum, the administration abide by all aspects of the law, not just some of it. I'm requesting the board discuss the formation of the parent-teacher advisory committee during this discussion portion of this meeting and a minimum add it as an item for future discussion. I'm also requesting to be invited to be a parent representative on the committee. As you all know, I tried to address my concern privately with the superintendent and the board. Of course, my question was not answered and I had to submit a FOIA, which resulted in over 500 pages of proof the district has been violating the law for multiple years. I'm sure the Attorney General will find it disappointing at a minimum, but not surprising, that the administration has not been following the law and continues to refuse to take steps remaining. to rectify the situation despite parental requests. Your inaction is putting the district at risk of lawsuits from parents, students, and staff. I'm once again requesting you immediately take steps to create a parent-teacher discipline advisory committee in accordance with the law. I'm requesting you go beyond the minimum requirement of including parents, teachers, bus drivers, local law enforcement, and community organizations to also include student supervisors. It is past time the stakeholders who have to live with the consequences of the policies are given the opportunity to voice ideas. It may take more time for a group to come to consensus, but I believe input from all stakeholders will result in a better outcome. 
<clears throat> and in addition to my a written response, I'm willing to have a personal discussion with any of you. I've provided my name and phone number to Mr. Tenapore. I hope this request does not continue to go unanswered by those of you elected to re represent to the community. If you aren't interested in discussing, perhaps the Tribune or other media outlets will be interested in a follow-up story to the civil rights investigation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jessica Hinkle. Next is Jessica Hinkle, followed by Andy John Kilkunis from Palatine Township. Well, this might sound like a broken record, but here we go. Uh, Dr. Small, on October 16th, I sent you an email asking how I can become a part of parent representative on the Parent Teacher Advisory Committee for District 211 as required by Illinois statute. The statute states that to that each school district, well, it says, the School Discipline Policies Parent-Teacher Advisory Committee to establish and maintain Parent-Teacher Advisory Committee to develop with the school board policy guidelines on pupil discipline, including school searches and bullying, prevent, bullying, bullying prevention set forth by Section 27-23.7 uh, of this code. It also goes on to state that the school board, along with Parent-Teacher Advisory Committee, must annually review their pupil discipline policies the Im implementation of those policies and any other factors related to the safety of their school's pupils and staff. Uh, in your response to my email, you referred me to the Schomburg High School principal stating that this is handled at the school level. Well, I didn't agree with this, that, uh, well, I didn't agree that this should be at the school level based on the law I just cited. I followed up with that, uh, Mr. Harlan, who invited me to attend an evening event for all parents the week of September 12th to review uh, building safety, security, and student bullying. <coughs> While this meeting was informative on how the school and the district handles outside safety threats and offerings, uh, and offerings to the students regarding safety, it did not fulfill the statute requirements. As I said, I am again requesting information on how to become a parent representative on the district parent teacher advisory committee as required by Illinois statute. I'm requesting this to be added to new business. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Andy, Andy John Kokunis, followed by Mercan Dewan. Good evening. I don't know, is this, uh, is this, is this my con? All right, perfect. Board President Anna Klimkovich, uh, Dr. Lisa Small, District 211 uh, school board members. My name is Andy John Calcunos, and I'm the Palatine Township Supervisor, uh, serving approximately 112,000 residents here in Palatine Township, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to, present, to represent my board here this evening and address you. Um, a little bit about Palatine Township. Some of you may not know that the township is the government that is closest to the people. We provide social services to eight municipalities in our community, Schaumburg, Hoffman Estates, Palatine, Inverness, Barrington, South Barrington, Rolling Meadows, Arlington Heights. We help low-income residents, seniors, veterans, people overcoming disabilities live successfully within our community. Uh, we provide assistance with food pantry, assessor's office, transportation, veteran services, and many outreach programs. Back to School Program is one of the programs we're here to speak to you tonight about. Uh, it's an award-winning program formerly known as Apple Tree, and it's been helping at-need children from kindergarten through ninth grade for many, many years, up to 34 years. Uh, our main purpose for the program is to help kids succeed. Um, we've been pro providing and uh, qualifying underprivileged students with new backpacks full of school supplies, all donated by very generous residents, some in this room tonight. This year, we expanded uh, this program from K through nine to include qualifying 10, 11th, and 12th graders for the first time ever. This is a big deal, and this year our kids received over 1,000 pre-packed backpacks according to their respective school supply lists. We're thrilled to help facilitate that, and as a part of the backpack school supply program, the community has identified a need for the same underprivileged students to cover their iPad insurance needs. We're able to do this with the general donor support of individuals, businesses, and civic organizations in this community. Uh, we're fortunate to have a, long, a longtime supporter uh, and sponsor in the Women's Club of Inverness. They're not here tonight this evening. They have been in, in previous meetings. Um, the Women's Club of Inverness gave a $1,000 contribution. 
We also have a wonderful grant from the Palatine JCs in the amount of twenty-four fifty, and the Palatine Township is thrilled to add twenty-one twenty-five. Uh, dollars to cover the cost for the iPad insurance for uh, over 183 high school students in Palatine Township. So at this time, I'd like to present some good news, uh, for a, a check for uh, Palatine Township students uh, for $4,500 and $75 to cover the cost of iPad insurance. So I want to thank everyone who serves the community, including all of you on this board tonight uh, and all the folks here tonight in the, in the audience and all the donors and the volunteers who packed the bags. We had a donor appreciation, a volunteer appreciation event last night for Palatine Township, and a lot of them don't get the praise that some of us uh, uh, get when we're elected and so forth, and um, they aren't standing before you tonight, but I call your attention to almost 100 volunteers that serve our township, um, that are privileged, I'm privileged to serve with and who deserve your recognition tonight. So thank you to all the donors and to all the volunteers and to all of you. And so we're here tonight to present this check. So that's for you. Thank you. Uh, next is Mercan Dewan, followed by Jerry Frieda. Hi, my name is Mukan Dewan. Um, I'm a senior at Fremd High School. And for the past nine months, I've been continuously raising concerns over rampant misconduct throughout Fremd High School. As a student who has constantly been trying to search and reach for some type of answer, it is appalling that despite my maximum effort, the Board of Education and Fremd High School administrators have chosen to act in line with their previous behavior of sweeping negative actions of teachers under the rug to preserve their prestigious status. Four years ago, if I was to be asked about the most exciting thing as I was looking forward to my first year at Fremd, I would have said, I'm excited to explore the opportunity. But as I stand here today, four years later, my response is, I'm aching to leave behind such a toxic environment. For months, everyone I've spoken to or spoken in front of has been made aware of the gross misconduct of John Tiger and Matthew Moore and the inactions of Mark Langer, Lisa Small, and others who have chosen to ignore the nature of transphobic, homophobic, and discriminatory environment that these two teachers at Frem have been harboring. During my last appearance at this very podium, I explicitly said that I would not stop until some sort of action is taken. And since then, I was asked multiple times, what are you looking for? And the more I heard and the more I looked into the actions of John Tyker and Matthew Moore within the music department, I'm calling for the termination or, or resignation of both John Tyker and Matthew Moore. Both of them have shown immoral conduct, incompetence, and neglect of duty throughout their time at Fremd, and I'm not, I'm not the only one who feels this way. Had the school board or administrators listened to me, they would have understood the frustration that students are feeling, as well as the disgusted parents, and this decision would have been made a long time ago. The fact that I have to come here again just to be heard is a crazy thought to me. Unlike the board members and administrators who have pro proven to me and everyone who supported me that they simply do not take action or any effort to adequately do their job, I'm a student in the midst of college applications, AP classes, extracurriculars, and working a part-time job and try my very best to maintain a healthy well-being. And instead of being at home right now, I have to take my time to simply address the board for something that they already know about and refuse to take action upon. I'm appalled at the behavior of this You have one minute remaining. I'm appalled at the behavior of this administration and so are so many others. There is always t um, more to come, and I ensure that this is not the end of this. You guys may sleep easy tonight, but I can guarantee that there will be a day of wallowing in your own inactions as a result for ignoring those you are elected to serve. Goodbye for now. Thank you. Jerry Frieda, followed by Robert Frankel. Hi, my name is Jerry Frieda. I've been a resident of the district for 40 years. Uh, I'd like to comment tonight on the gay panic 
being stirred up in our community by extremist groups like Awake Illinois and Moms for Liberty. From working to ban books that have been in the library for years to completely unsupported accusations of grooming to discounting pleas for acceptance by the LGBTQ community. A vocal minority in this district is making life more difficult than it already is for gay teens in District 211. Since estimates of the percentage of gay people in the population are generally about 5%, there are likely about 600 LGBTQ students in this district that are being targeted by these right-wing extremists. Why? To what end? But they're screeching about books and grooming and inflammatory slogans like, quote, they're coming for your kids. Absent is any answer to a fundamental question. Do you actually think that choosing to read a book or having a rainbow flag in a classroom is going to turn your kid gay? But let's get back to the original question of why is this happening and, and, and why is it happening now? According to news reports and those tracking social media, this is a well-orchestrated effort by extremist groups with the support of local political groups like the Palatine Township Republican Organization, who, by the way, featured the leader of Awake Illinois as a speaker at their meeting this month, even after Awake's reckless words led to violence by a proud boy at a gay-owned bakery not far from here. In fact, it's an effort to get their base voters riled up and to the polls this November and this spring, no matter who gets hurt. It's not a coincidence that we're now seeing an uptick of similar inflammatory rhetoric aimed at libraries and school boards all across the suburbs, in Donners Grove, in Park Ridge, and just up the road in Barrington, to name a few. Also, since this is National Suicide Prevention Month, you have one minute month, remaining. It's important to emphasize that the third leading cause of death in 15 to 24 year olds is suicide. For LBGTQ students, the suicide rate is four times greater within that age group. Revealingly, that suicide rate decreases by 25% for gay students who view this, their school as affirming. So to those board members who support inclusion in this district, thank you. Please continue to stand strong. Mm -hmm. To those, it seems, who hope to garner some political advantage by involving themselves with the extremists, you're hurting hundreds of the very students that you're supposed to be helping, helping them to flourish, helping them to feel accepted while getting an honest education in our community. So please stop. Thank you. Thank you. Robert Frankel. Good evening. I'm a 48-year resident of Schaumburg, 40 years on the library board of Schaumburg Township District Library, president of the North Suburban Library System for a number of years when it was active. We had a standard that people would have, would come to the board and say, I want this book taken out of the library. I don't want my children to read this book. My answer was, don't bring them to the library and don't have them read the book. It's your responsibility. We have people that are well-trained, that are well-educated, that know what is acceptable from the American Library Association. Those books will be kept on the shelf. During those 40 years, we never took a book off the shelf because it was never put on the shelf unless it was an accredited book. The fact that you have a, a, a philosophy or a religion that does not condone certain things, that's your problem. If you don't like the way it's, an education system is done, Educate your children at home. If you don't like the way something is taught, for instance, history, history, my God, we don't want the young people to, to learn this. History is not very pleasant. Look at American history and look at it from its founding. What group other than Norgen, Northern uh, uh, Europeans have not been discriminated against in this country and continue to be discriminated against if it had been possible, our early people would have wiped out the Native Americans. The blacks would still be under uh, civil, before the Civil War standards. There was a Chinese Exclusion Act. And any group that came from Central Europe, from Southern Europe, any group that wasn't a quote unquote Christian acceptable group was discriminated against. It is the job of education 
to make everything possible. You have one minute remaining. Not to discriminate, not to make a decision based on religious standards. I hope that education will continue to develop minds that question and accept fact and not opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all of our speakers this evening. Our next item on the agenda will continue with a public hearing. And the recommended action is that in accordance with section 5-17-1.3 of the Illinois School Code, cash balances are reported in item 7.C and 9.A of tonight's meeting agenda. And the public hearing on the 2022-2023 budget of Township High School District is now open. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? All right, then I need a voice, voice vote. All those in favor of opening up the public hearing, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, our, the public hearing is now open. Do we have anyone that wish to address the budget? I do not. Okay, no one had signed up for it. Um, anyone from the audience? Okay, if not, then um, the recommended action is to close the public hearing. And that, mo that action is that the public hearing on the 2022-2023 budget of Township High School District 211 is now closed. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? <coughs> All right, a voice vote to close the hearing. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, and then the public hearing then is closed. Our next item is the consent agenda. <coughs> um, I do have a request to pull item letter F. Are there any other items that someone wishes to have pulled from the consent agenda? Okay, if there is not, uh, the first recommended action is, there'll be three actions. The first recommended action is the consent agenda with the removal of the minutes of the re regular meeting from August 18, 2022, and the removal of item F be approved as presented. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, roll call, please. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mr. Kramer? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Mr. McGowan? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. The next recommended action is that the minutes of the regular meeting of August 18, 2022 be prevo excuse me, be approved as presented. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay. Roll call, please. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mr. Kramer? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Mr. McGowan? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. Okay. And our third recommended action um, is that the Board of Edu... This is um, item F. That the Board of Education approve the resolutions authorizing intervention in proceedings before the State Property Tax Appeal Board, which seek assessed valuation reductions in excess of $100,000 for property tax year 2021. Docket numbers 21 21-2191, 21-2291, 21-2155, 21-2162, 21-2203, 21-2207, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274, 21-2274
So moved. Second. Okay, um, open it up for discussion. Uh, thank you, Madam President, for removing this from the consent agenda. Um, we're, we're basically using district resources in this action <coughs> to contest the appeal of small businesses um, that we've been alerted to. One of these, as an example, is an auto repair shop in Schaumburg that has an assessed value of 200000 and they're requesting um, an appeal to 100000 for basically a brick garage. Um, I don't think we should be using district resources to attack our small businesses in our community. Um, I, I think we should be focused on education and, and putting our resources in that direction. We also have a ability with the recapture levy to recoup any funds from property tax revenue that we need, and I, I think this is uh, not a valid use of, of district resources, and I, I would request that the board reconsider approving this. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, if not, may I have a roll call, please? Mr. Bradley? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mr. Kramer? No. Mr. Dombrowski? Nay. Mr. McGowan? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Mrs. Klimkwitz? Aye. Okay, and then that will take us to um, our special reports, and you have some Freedom of Information Act requests. That's an information item, if anyone has any questions. The next is a report on new professional staff, a report item, information item. Dr. Small. We are excited to welcome 67 new full and part-time professional staff, including teachers, psychologists, social workers, speech and language pathologists, and counselors to District 211 this year. Thank you. Um, the next is the six-day enrollment. Any items there? As of our six-day audit, we have 12,274 students enrolled in District 211. This is one of our highest enrollments over the past few years. Okay. The next item is the class size committee report, please. There are almost 3,500 sections of courses active across our five high schools. Each year, the number of students assigned to each section are reviewed. There are under 10 sections of the almost 3,500 that remain over the guidelines. And my sincere appreciation to our student services directors and their teams as they lead the complex development of creating our master schedules each year. Okay. All right, if there's no questions, we'll continue moving along. Uh, the next item is the salary compensation <coughs> report. It's an information item. The Illinois School Code requires the annual reporting to the ISBE and the posting of administrator and teacher salaries. The report on the agenda will be submitted to the ISBE and posted on the District 211 website as required. Okay. The next item then is the uh, 2022 Summer School Enrollment Report. The Summer School Cost Analysis is presented detailing the cost of the district for running two semesters of summer school. The expenditures include salaries for all personnel hired specifically for summer schools and supplies associated with the courses. Okay. All right. If there's no questions, then we'll, we'll move on to the unfinished business. And the recommended action is that the Board of Education adopt the resolution as presented to establish the fiscal year of the school district to begin July 1, 2022 and end June 30th, 2023, and that the budget as presented for fiscal year 2022-2023 be adopted. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Discussion? Okay, if there's no discussion, then roll call, please. Mr. Kramer? No. Mr. McGowan? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? No. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. All right, then that takes us to the next recommended action is the resolution authorizing abatement <coughs> of the 2021 tax levy and waiving loss and cost factor. The recommended action is that the Board of Education approve a resolution abating a portion of the taxes levied for the 2021 tax year in the operations and maintenance fund in an amount of $3 million, including waiver of the loss and cost factor for a final 2021 operations and maintenance fund levy of 30,962,000. 
and the final total 2021 levy amount of 242 million 15,000 as presented. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, discussion and Dr. Small. At its March 17, 2022 meeting, the Board of Education approved a resolution to abate the 2021 tax levy by $3 million in the Operations and Maintenance O&M Fund. The re resolution also called for a waiver of the loss and cost factor in the O&M Fund. Though the March re resolution, excuse me, waives the loss and cost factor in the O&M Fund, the county has just notified us that they would allocate the 3% loss and cost to all the other funds, offsetting the desired amount of the abatement. In order to ensure that the district's final 2021 levy calculation abates 3 million, the loss and cost must be waived for all funds. The attached resolution is presented for adoption is consistent with the resolution adopted in March of 2022, with the exception of the change to waiving the loss and cost factor for the entire levy. Again, this is to ensure the full $3 million is abated from the levy as expected by the action the board took in March 2022 for tax relief to our community. Any discussion? So can we, we, we can't do this in two separate motions. We can't do a $3 million abatement without waiving the, the cost and loss. I think we've already abated it, but we have to just make certain it's not added on to one of the other um, funds. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. I believe we have to take it as the motion as, as presented. Is there any discussion? Yeah, just a question. Was this a surprise that we had to do some reworking of, of the numbers? It's the state of Illinois. Well, it was a surprise. Lauren, they just notified us, the tax assessor's office did. Yes, they are several months behind in, uh, and we still do not have final tax rates calculated, so we just had this discussion with them uh, recently. Um, abating the operating portion of the levy is not as typical as abating the debt service levy, um, and because we are under the PTEL limit, this is a, a shift. So. Uh, we appreciated them having the conversation with us and allowing us the opportunity so we, to we modify didn't, this. I mean, is there a process that we didn't follow or we're not aware of? Um, no, we followed the process. This is just a notification. There's a, a, a um, levy edit process that follows the formal procedures of filing the levy, and this is we are at that portion. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, if not, roll call, please. Mr. Dombrowski. Abstain. Mr. Bradley. Aye. Mr. Rosenblum. Aye. Ms. Cavill. Aye. Mr. McGowan. Aye. Mr. Kramer. Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz. Aye. Okay, the next item is um, The, under new business, the uh, 2022 tax levy introduction, its information. Dr. Small. Thank you. For the 2022-2023 school year, property taxes will comprise <coughs> approximately 83% of the district's total revenue. As the largest source of revenue for the district, understanding and improving the levy process is critical to the financial stability of the district in order to provide sustained quality instructional programming for students while providing a means for achieving the district's strategic priorities without issuing debt. The tax levy will serve as the primary funding source to sustain the educational programs for students, support district operations, and complete necessary capital improvements across the district. Tonight's introductory report details two components of the 2022 levy that will be also discussed in the upcoming presentation in October. The levy discussion will continue at the November Board of Education meeting with approval at the December meeting. The two components I'm referencing are the property tax refund recapture levy law that was in place for the first time within the 2021 levy. This law allows taxing bodies to recapture monies lost from specific types of property tax refunds. The District 211 Board of Education provided tax, property tax relief to our community in the 2021 levy by baiting the property tax refund recapture levy in full. If the property tax refund recapture levy is not abated, 
It is automatically added to the levy by the Cook County Treasurer's Office, and it is not subject to the tax cap. New for the 2022 levy is the look back recapture levy law. This allows a taxing district who does not levy to the tax cap or PTEL limit to recapture the amount not levied in the Im immediate succeeding three years as long as the levy does not exceed 5%. In order to have this opportunity in the three years following the levy, a resolution must be filed right after the levy stating the possibility of using this look back recapture levy law in the upcoming three years. The 2022 tax levy calendar and considerations are included in the informational report attached to the agenda in preparation for October's levy presentation and discussion. Does anyone have any, any questions or comments? And we'll have more information as, as we go along. So this is just kind of the, the introduction to give us a little bit more foundation in regards to it. Will you be providing some more detail on the look back <coughs> recapture? Because I think we, we need to, <laughs> that's new. Absolutely. Okay. So that is uh, an introductory paragraph is in here and it will also show up again in October. In some, some detail? Yes. Okay. Okay, and, and Ms. Hummel is always available if, if you have any questions. So, which is perfect. I want to see the presentation. So, if if I recall the uh, the introduction, um, we're anticipating five percent plus the new growth. So, if we do take action on that recommendation, a resolution would not be allowed. Correct. You cannot exceed the five percent. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Five percent plus new growth. Correct. You cannot exceed the five percent tax cap in order to implement the look back recapture. Oh, okay, okay. That's what he, I believe that was your question, correct? It, right. If we if we go to the PTEL cap um, with our levy, then the resolution isn't an option. And I think that's probably something we we know that is different. You've got the 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 PTEL, and then you've got the uh, the look back recapture law. So those are some things that we kind of need to learn a little, a little more about. Uh, you know, um, last year when we were having discussions about the recapture levy, there was s some vagueness coming, not from us, from, but from Cook County and other authorities about how that was actually supposed to work. So, you know, I as I recall, in many of our discussions, some of the answers were, I don't know, we have to ask them how this is going to work. Because the look back recapture levy law is new, when we start having this discussion, you know, I had forwarded questions about this to Dr. Small this week. I'm just as interested. Do we anticipate being able to get actual answers? Do you have a sense of that from the committee? <laughs> You know, from, from the <coughs> relevant authorities. Yeah, certainly as you uh, describe, it's new and everyone is um, in the process of uh, understanding legally what the language entails. We have had conversations already with the um, Cook County Clerk's Office as well as with our attorneys and um, have presented a series of questions that we hope to have answers to. They are uh, working with their respective parties to understand that and um, plan to follow up next week to see where we are. We do um, have some clarity as far as um, we know the earliest that we can take action. I think the, the question that we have in place is what the latest is. So if we do not have clear act, you know, answers at that time, we do know that we will just take action earlier to make sure that we do not have any complications um, if that were to be a provision that we apply for. So for example, last year we uh, had the levy discussion through December, then we had a debate discussion to follow um, <coughs> directly to what you asked and what to Lauren said. Um, when we come to October, it may not be presented that way in order to ensure that if we don't have direct <coughs> confident answers from the tax assessor's office, we will present a recommendation where everything is done by December. You gotta roll it all up. Yep, so that, that we don't miss it, miss it by accident yeah, because yeah, we yeah. didn't get the answers from the tax assessor's office in time. Any other questions or discussion? Okay, if not, then we will move on to the public address system. And the recommended action is that the Board of Education approve Sound Incorporated to the upgrade of the 
public address system at James B. Conant High School at a cost not to exceed $160,986. May I have a motion, please? I'd like to ask that that be reread, please, at least the amount. You had said 160000 I apologize, 166986 So moved. Second. <clears throat> Any discussion? Dr. Small? At the May 12, 2022 Board of Education meeting, the board approved the engagement of architects, engineers, or specific services to bid to present bids or project costs for auditory improvements, including ADA accessibility, air conditioning and applied technology classrooms in the remaining four schools, and public address system improvements. Tonight, the upgrades for the public address system at Conant High School are being presented. Conant High School already <coughs> has a newer PA system compared to the other schools, and the installation of upgrades, including programmability, amplifier, battery backup systems, and exter exterior strobe equipment is presented today. The current system has not been consistently reliable over the past year, and that is why it's presented first for the board's consideration and approval. Any discussion? Dr. Small, can you speak to how these improvements would assist with improved student and school safety? Well, Yes, the first improvement would be that it would actually operate consistently, and <laughs> that would be important. Um, there have been at least two times in the past year that we have had issues with the Conant communication system. In terms of the safety component of it, obviously communication is key during safety. Um, one, it, it is a two-way communication system. So not only can we communicate broadly across our schools, outside of our schools, to our fields surrounding, but also local um, individual classrooms can also communicate directly to the switchboard. So it is a call button that allows two-way communication and any information in a, any type of emergency or unusual event in a classroom, it's important for that two-way communication to be able to occur. Thank you. Anything else? Yes. Uh, per board policy DJC, the district's goal is to purchase the appropriate item of the desired quality at the best possible price. While this is the case, we do not have to approve the lowest bidder. Considering life safety related needs of our schools is not a once every so many years plan activity. Things can change. In fact, things have changed. The request and proposal for this item as well as another yet to come regarding new safety and security enhancements for the 2022-2023 fiscal year and beyond are necessary for the safety of everyone in our facilities, on our properties, using our school resources, and participating in our programs across the community spectrum. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? All right, if not, may I have a roll call, please? Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Mr. Kramer? What's the motion to approve, <coughs> to, to approve the, the expense? Correct. Okay, aye. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Mr. McGowan? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. All right, that takes us to the next recommended action, is that the Board of Education approve a three-year contract with Standard, effective January 1, 2023, for life insurance at a rate of 11 cents per thousand dollars of coverage for active members and $1.25 per $1,000 of coverage for retirees accidental death and dismemberment insurance at a rate of 0.018 cents per $1,000 of coverage and long-term disability insurance at a rate of 0.072 per $100 of coverage as presented. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? All right, if there's no discussion, roll call, please. Mr. Bradley. Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Mr. McGowan? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mr. Kramer? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. That takes us to the next recommended action is that the Board of Education adopt the attached resolution approving the Teachers Retirement System Supplemental Savings Plan Employer Participation Agreement as presented and file the EPA with TRS by September 30th 2022. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, discussion? 
A new Dr. law Small. requires all TRS employers to participate in the TRS Supplemental Savings Plan, which is a tax-sheltered 457B optional plan available to active TRS members. This plan is administered by TRS and their provider. As an employer, our required role <coughs> is to withhold the employee's contributions and pass them through to TRS as designated by the employee. Okay, any questions? If not, roll call, please. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Mr. Kramer? Aye. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Mr. McGowan? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. That takes us to the next recommended action is that the Board of Education authorize funds totaling $834,145 to be allocated towards safety and security enhancements across district facilities for the 2022-2023 fiscal year. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, Dr. Small, and then discussion. At the July 2022 Board of Education meeting, a detailed report was presented to the board regarding safety and information, including alignment with the extensive research and recommendations related to school safety from the Secret Service, Secret Service and federal and state law enforcement agencies. District 211 continues to review the latest safety recommendations and technologies, and tonight presents additional recommendations for safety upgrades. The upgrades included in the report include camera system upgrades and expansions, public address system upgrades that relate to security, perimeter and facility access measures, additional <coughs> emergency call buttons, and security supervision and staffing. School safety and security assessments are conducted annually with school and district administration, as well as representatives from our three partnering local police departments. An outside security consultant is also assessing our campuses this fall. A recurring concern that has arisen is related to the number of safety and supervision staff during the day and the gaps in supervision and safety present during the after school hours. District 211 facilities are open and operate essentially from 6 a.m. until 10 p.m. every weekday and on weekends, including practices, competitions, events, continuing education classes, and rentals. Additional consistent staffing is being recommended for during the school day, but also detailed in the report is a security staff presence in our schools and on our campus after school hours until 10 p.m. in the evenings on weekdays. At this point, there's no <coughs> recommendation for consistent security staffing on weekends, only scheduling as events needed. Recommendations from the security audit when it is complete will be reviewed in partnership with the local police and presented to the board for future consideration. Okay. Any discussion or questions? Yeah, I, I really appreciate the, the depth and the breadth that, that the administration has gone into for, for the safety and security aspect. Uh, it's comprehensive, it's deep, and it's broad. Uh, I really appreciate the, the work that, that, that you and your staff are doing for this. Thank you. Anything else? I know consensus on this board can be very, very elusive. But in this area, I believe, um, not just the administration, but I believe that we've worked very well together. And I look forward to continuing to work well together in this regard, especially I know that uh, this issue is important to us all. So um, <coughs> I, I'm very pleased about this as well for many different reasons. Thank you. And we'll have more information going <coughs> to the parents about security going forward after we get our evaluation and so on. Correct. In addition to what's presented. What's been presented. All right. Thank you. If there's no other questions or discussion, then roll call, please. Mr. McGowan. Aye. Mr. Rosenblum. Aye. Ms. Cavill. Aye. Mr. Dombrowski. Aye. Mr. Bradley. Aye. Mr. Kramer. Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz. Aye. All right, that takes us to the next recommended action is that the Board of Education approve the pre-approval form for future expense reimbursement for Anna Klumkowitz and Stephen Rosenblum to attend the North Cook Division dinner meeting October 26, 2022, as submitted. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion or questions? What's the cost? $37, I believe it was. $37? Um, tell there's, you in a minute. There's two... There's two expense reports submitted. Okay. 
Um, the cost is, uh, the registration fee is $37. It's going to be at one of the, um, at the schools, at Evanston High School. And the topic is on uh, diversity and what they're doing over at their school. Okay, if there's no other discussion, then may I have a roll call, please? Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Mr. McGowan? Aye. Mr. Kramer? Present. Mrs. Cavill? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. Um, the last <coughs> item there is potential topics for future discussion. Yes, uh, Madam President, I'd like to request that the, the board engages in discussion on, on Senate Bill 100, um, as a member of the public had, had brought up, with regard to the committees and, and what the district's doing. I, I think that uh, if there is supposed to be annual reviews by the board with, uh, within a selected committee, I, I haven't participated or been aware of. So um, I'd like to have that discussion and, and take this month to just review what that law requires and, and ensure we're in compliance. Okay. Um, is uh, specifically on Senate Bill 100 and how it relates to uh, any kind of parenting groups or yeah. just the whole thing? I, I, correct. Yeah, it probably would not be the bill if it's law. It, we'd have to figure out what, what the actual statute is. Which is why I would prefer to have this information first in a board letter than pending what that information is. Uh, we bring it to the larger board. I want more information first. Well, I mean, we can agree to, to discuss it later on. I, Let me, let's, well, let's find out. Is there consensus as, as Mr. Sure. Um, Dombrowski had requested? Mr. McGowan? Yes. Okay, and Mr. Dombrowski? Yes. Ms. Cavill? No. Mr. Bradley? If you don't mind repeating exactly what it is you want to bring back here. I, I want to have a discussion on, on uh, the Senate Bill 100, as was mentioned during the public comments regarding having a discipline committee made up of parents and teachers that's reviewed annually with the Board of Education. So specifically around a discipline committee is what you're looking for, or the entire and, bill? And. Uh, not necessarily the entire bill, but I haven't I haven't had a chance to look into it um, until tonight. I had heard about it, so I'd, I'd sure. probably take the next month to read it. But my concern is with the discipline committee and the uh, requirement of the annual review with the Board of Education. I, I don't recall this board reviewing anything regarding discipline with committees. Yeah, I'm for learning more about the discipline committee with the community. Mr. Kramer? Yeah, if it's law, we're not doing it. We need to look into it. Mr. Rosenblum? I agree. I'm, I'm open to discussing not only the bill, but how our district is uh, following the, the legislation and the requirements. Okay. I would agree with that also. Um, Dr. Small, can we have uh, the administration kind of look at the time frame, get us some information, and we'd have an opportunity to take a look at that first Certainly. before discussion? I will resend the board information on the committee and I will make sure that I bring that forward at the next board meeting also. Okay, and um, please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm not certain, do we have it on uh, what Senate Bill 100 with the student discipline, what exactly what it covers, the statute? Uh, Senate Bill 100 is a large bill that deals with student discipline. Um, I would, right now what I'm hearing is the discipline committee. It is a larger issue to go through Senate Bill 100, but okay. we are certainly more than willing to do that in the future also. I, yes, this perhaps. is my concern. I'm happy for a discussion. I want to make sure that we're actually on the same page about what the, what the discussion is, what its purpose is, so we're not, we're not all over the place. That's my primary concern. So it sounds like I and everybody else wants a lot more information, but as I'm hearing different comments from different people. I'm hearing about a discipline committee, but I'm also hearing about the bill. I want to make sure we're all on the, very clear about what we're doing. That, that's my concern. Yeah. I'm not sure that we're clear. I, I think the administration is pretty good at put it, putting together an, an agenda item and providing information. 
I'm happy with that. Yes, uh, so no one ever suggested that. Let me that. Let Let sure me suggest that. this. I will give you, again, resend the information on the discipline committee, make sure everybody has that, and then I will give you a short summary on the entire bill, and then you can consider whether you would like more information on that. I think, I think one thing we need to consider is what we heard tonight during public comments, and it's not, I don't know if it's a discipline <coughs> committee or a parent, teacher, administration, board, collaboration, committee, whatever the legislation is, mm -hmm. is requiring us to do from what we heard during public comments tonight is, is how I'd like to go. And that's the direction that Dr. Small is going to take and present us some information with some overview of what Senate Bill 100 is, because I think that that's important to, to consider also. Can, can we get the legislative language with that addition to the summary? Sure. Thank you. Okay. Is that mm -hmm. uh, clear for you then? All right. All right. Thank you. All right. So that'll take us to our committee reports. And uh, the first one is NSSEO. We had a number of recognitions. We had the Rotary Clubs of Arlington Heights and Buffalo Grove there. They um, created flower beds and the greenhouse restoration for the students at minor school, which is absolutely outstanding for the kids to be able to uh, plant things, be able to see them grow and participate in that. Uh, we also recognized one of the employees from Sunrise Lake, Rowena Osborne, uh, who has been there many years. And if you've been out to Sunrise, and if you haven't, I would suggest you go out to Sunrise Lake an absolutely marvelous facility, uh, provides so much for students, uh, extremely accessible, and gives the students an opportunity to experience the outdoors and a lot of things that their uh, regular peers uh, are able to do. We also had a presentation on the continuous improvement plan uh, in regards to the Kirk campus. One of their goals is the student outcomes and looking at the classroom essentials, what's in the classroom, how the classrooms are set up, um, training and follow-up coaching for, for the teachers, for the staff. Uh, during the summer, they worked on more literacy and math for, for our students. So there was a lot going on there. Um, Dr. Hackett then presented some information about the Positive Pathways form. They're continuing with that. NSSEO is facilitating some of the forums. They're going to be meeting quarterly to continue a collaborative information and uh, exchange of, of information there. Um, uh, NSSEO is, is back to doing what they call bright spots of inviting the community members uh, and, and legislators, uh, representatives from the different organizations, representatives from school boards to come over to the school and engage with the students in some of the experience so they can see the hands-on of what's, what's going on um, at the schools, whether it's Minor, whether it's Kirk, whether it's Timber Ridge. So that is it for NSSEO. That would take us then to EdRed. Thank you. So a couple things on EdRed. Their annual kickoff luncheon is coming up on October 6th. We will have a couple of representatives from our school district in attendance. Um, earlier today, they held two sessions, uh, two webinars called EdRed 101, which was an opportunity for, uh, for people to learn more about uh, the, an overview of the organization and how best to advocate, because that's what they're about, advocate, advocating and legislation support um, through our membership. So those were held earlier today, and that's it for my report on EdRed. Okay, thank you. Uh, community and Family Service Report, Mr. Dombrowski or Mr. McGowan. Sure. Um, <clears throat> the last meeting was August 22nd, uh, 2022, for the group in the South. Um, uh, discussion revolved around Ukra uh, Ukrainian support group for refugees. Um, they're having housing issues, uh, helping uh, the influx. Um, that was back in August before the buses started arriving, so I'm sure Monday will be another discussion around that. Um, ESL classes, uh, they're full at Harper. D211 was filling up. Um, just recently, they've received more Venezuelans than Mexicans seeking aid. Um, so that, that's been a shift in, in kind of uh, the demographic that they've been seeing. 
Um, they've been working to get a PACE bus from the Schomburg Transportation Hub to Harper College. Um, bikes have been placed at Palatine Metro Station to facilitate um, students uh, getting to Harper. And then there was some discussion about emphasizing uh, trades and education. Um, Ms. Musman's representative, I don't think, was aware of our trades program, but uh, I chimed in and, and we, uh, we highlighted some of the things that we're doing. So um, with uh, some of our outreach and, and materials that we put out, we, we should be emphasizing trades more because I don't think the, our community is aware of everything we're doing. Hmm. All right. That, well, thank you very much. Um, facilities and building safety report, Mr. Bradley. Yeah, thank you. So I had an opportunity to go out to Fram, uh, I'm sorry, I went out to uh, Schomburg, Conant, and Hoffman. I'll be visiting Fram and Palatine on Monday, and I'm happy to say that all of the construction projects for this summer um, were completed without um, uh, any delays. I know we were anticipating uh, potentially some delays over at Conant with the parking lot. And uh, we are gearing up for some potential uh, work uh, the summer of 2023. Anything else, Warren? I think that covers it. Several of the projects that are um, being discussed will be reviewed with the board. Those that we've talked about uh, that have been on our plan, such as uh, locker rooms and things, there were some bids tonight that start to uh, award work for summer 2023 projects and the in additional information will come to the board as that in, uh, as those bids are prepared the Schools are looking really good Conan's right. parking lot looking way better <laughs> All right, thank you very much. All right, that takes us to announcements There's the upcoming events and calendar items. I have a question regarding that has anyone from the board stepped forward yet to uh, attend the National Honor Society induction ceremony at Conant or are we still in need of someone expressing interest in that? Do we know? Uh, do no we have can. anyone that, that we can? We do not have a volunteer yet. We do not yet have someone. Okay. Is there a volunteer that would be what able to? Speak to speak it's, it's a Wednesday. Wednesday Hold on just a second. Wednesday, October 12th at 7.30 p.m. Um, I can take that one. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Campbell. Thank you. All right. Then that will take us to the next recommended action um, is that the board enter closed session to discuss minutes of meetings lawfully closed under the Open Meetings Act, security procedures, school building safety and security, and the use of personnel and equipment to respond to an actual, a threatened, or a reasonably potential danger to the safety of employees, students, staff, the public, or public property appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees, matters pertaining to an individual student, and collective negotiating matters between the public body and its motion or their representatives. May I have a motion, please? Could you repeat the last line of that motion, please? And collective <coughs> negotiating matters between the public body and its employees or their representatives. Thank you. So moved. Second. All right, um, in regards to discussion, um, we've already completed the first uh, closed session, and unless someone would like to go back, we may not need to do that. So um, if there's no discussion, then roll call, please. What, what, can we explain a yes, what a yes or a no means? I apologize. Um, a no vote means we do not have to go back into closed session. A yes vote would be that we would go back into closed session. Okay. All right. So may I have a roll call, please? Mr. Bradley? No. Ms. Cavill? No. Mr. Kramer? No. Mr. Dombrowski? No. Ms. Mr. McGowan? No. Mr. Rosenblum? No. Mrs. Klimkowitz? No. All right. Then that takes us to um, some recommended action items. Um, that the Board of Education <coughs> accepts the retirement request of Matthew Ruska effective May 2027 according to the master contract of the District 211 Teachers Union and Christopher, Christopher Zickert <coughs> effective May 2027 according to the master contract of the District 211 Teachers Union. May I have a motion please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All right, roll call please. Mr. Kramer? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mr. McGowan? Aye. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. 
Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. The next recommended action is that employee <coughs> George Mata be suspended for three days without pay. Further, that the board secretary notify said employee in writing of this action by the Board of Education. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, roll call, please. Ms. Cavill? Uh, yes. Mr. McGowan? Aye. Mr. Kramer? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Mrs. Klinkowitz? <coughs> Aye. With that, um, and there's no further business to come before the board, the board president declares this meeting of the board, board of Education adjourned at 9.54 p.m.